So after looking at um, William Beatty's publication, what happened after that? You know, it was the 1700s. Well, then you have Wilhelm Wundt and Stanley Hall who establish the first psychology labs. Wundt established his in Germany, and then Hall established his in the United States. And this was kind of important as there weren't ways to measure what we find at, find in psychology. It is still kind of a soft science where it's not like medical where you can see the results and you can draw blood and you can cut someone open and see what's wrong. Psychology is much more deeper than that. So finding ways to experiment on, ethically experiment your theories was kind of rare. So these two um, labs were really important. And then around the 1880s, you have Herman Eddinghaus, and his study was really important. What he did was he studied memory, which was kind of unheard of as um, Wundt um, published that memory could not be studied experimentally. Eb Ebbinghaus um, decided to take that leap and study memory, and what he did was he used himself as a subject and what he wanted to see was how much material could be memorized so he, what he did was he created um about 2300 or so one syllable consonant vowel consonant combinations such as taz bach and lif that he used in his um independent study of meaning and he divided the, the syllables into a series of lists that he memorized under fixed conditions. And what he did was he recorded the amount of time it took him to memorize the list perfectly. Um, he did the varied, um, varied the conditions to arrive at the observations about the effects of such variables at, as speed, length, list, the number of repetitions, and then he also looked at the factors involved in retention of the memorized material, comparing the in in initial memorization time with the time needed for the second memorization of the same material after a given time, like 24 hours, 48 hours, and then he looked at the memorization attempts. And what these results showed us was that there was a regular forgetting curve over time approximated a mathematical function similar to um, Fetner's study. And after a steep initial de decline in learning time between the first and second memorization, the curve leveled off progressively with sub subsequent effects or efforts. So what that really means is when he was looking at how well he was able to memorize um, the material, there was a point where you did forget it and he what he was doing was rote learning so you learn and you learn and you study and you study and so you have it and then do you forget it between point a to point b and then he also looked at how meaningful these um things were that he was trying to remember so the more meaningful it is are you more likely to remember it for instance a spouse's birthday your mother's death, you know, a really good success in your life, a traumatic um, event in your life, are you more willing to memorize those because they have some form of meaning to you, whether good or bad versus the list to the grocery store, the <clears throat> phone number of a stranger. You're less likely to memorize those because they don't hold meaning to you. Um, and then he also did take his work um, with the facility or the faculty of the University of Prisla. Um He studied children in 1897. And what he found, what he developed was a sentence completion test that is still widely used in the measurement of intelligence. And he worked on this until about 1905 and was probably the first successful test of mental ability that they found 
and still used today, which I think is great.